Hello, everybody. Sorry I am late. Two minutes, three minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Hey, Granny. How you doing? Hey, Joey. How are you? <laughs> you been doing? I'm trying to situate the camera. I'm trying to work with my 14-year-old on, uh, hey, uh, hey, girl. <laughs> How you doing? True Urban Queen. I always love your name. Hey, Chewy Apples. I'm, I am coming by for my candid apples. I swear I am. Hello, Vicky. <laughs> oh, I have the beautiful, most best Detroit reporter in the world, Vicky Thomas. Love her. <laughs> hey, Diane. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm going to give everybody a few minutes to come in. Come in and, and um, get it going. If you didn't see the part one, it's still available on Periscope. So we're going off of a PowerPoint that I actually did in 2011. If you're new to my periscopes, then you know, like I keep them up here for a few days and then I take them down. And then a couple of weeks, they will be ready on my YouTube channel. I don't subscribe to Catch. They go over to my YouTube channel because I need to get that some traffic too. So I keep them available there most of the time. Hey, I saw Jerome. I think I saw Jerome come in. Introduce yourself. Um, if you want to put your. Uh, link in to who you are and everything so um also uh part one we learned a little bit about part one we did this morning at 10 a.m and it was uh basically the beginning of writing so if you if you did not uh see it you can always go back on there and it's still available hello miss jefferson can't wait to hear your see your new book come out so hurry up i'm so proud of you working on that Thank you for the love. If you're just joining us, make sure you share this with your Twitter, with your followers, uh, with everyone. Get them in, in here and let's get going on writing things that I love to do, reading and writing. So I am so happy you guys are here. We're going to uh, get going. If you hear any bumping, I'm going to warn you. My 14-year-old is putting her cosplay together for... Uh, the allied media so she's in there working vigilantly on it and I'm hoping she doesn't hurt herself trying to put a TV on her head so <laughs> so thank you so I'm gonna introduce myself my name is Sylvia Hubbard now that we have the room uh, my name is Sylvia Hubbard I am a indie author of romance and suspense and I am founder of Motown Writers uh, Network. I have independently published over 37 novels, um, award-winning novels, um, uh, best-selling novels. Uh, I've been um, founder of Motown Writers Network, uh, started in 2000 as a way to get writers uh, to their literary goals and readers to see Michigan authors. You can check us out on MotownWriters.com. You can also check out my website. I dropped my paper. Um, you can check out my website at SylviaHubbard.com. And also, of course, HowToEbook.org is where most times the uh, PowerPoint is available for you to purchase later on. Um, usually I post them the same time I post the video. So in probably in a couple of weeks, you'll get this PowerPoint. I'm going to get really better at making sure the PowerPoint is up and available during there. But, um, yeah, just make sure you follow me on social or follow me, um, follow my blogs. And you'll get an alert of when this will be available so you can share it and watch it again and make sure you missed anything. Get your paper and pen out. Um, as we go along, I'm a blog host of over five blogs and I consider myself an author's best friend. I don't usually say I'm a guru or a consultant anymore or, you know, anything like that, but I am an encourager. I do help people get to where they want to be. And, you know, you have a question about writing, just go ahead and throw it out as we go through it. Now, like I said this morning, um, we, we, we ended with six ways to write your story, which was a personal thing towards writers. Make sure that you're giving people... Um, Letting people know you're writing, learn to cope with change, stop focusing on other people, add value wherever you can, choose your lens to view the world, make your own choices, and evaluate the people in your life. Now we're going to move on to towards just fiction, because we talked a lot about nonfiction this morning, but now we're going to talk about writing a fiction story. So 
get ready let's go so plotting a page turner because the first thing we talked about is getting that plot and that plot outline together in part one so plotting the page turner everybody says well okay how do you do it a lot of people I learned a lot of writers don't know how to plot <laughs> and I, I find that well I mean it's it's, it's kind of like coming up with a diabolical scheme you have to have a plan in order to get it done so plotting that page turner is one set an ultimate goal this is like a promise to the reader this is what you are going to make sure by the end of the story this happens and we talked this morning about um, don't you hate when you get uh, a book and then they have all these things going on with the characters and then at the end something isn't done and you're like well what happened to the sister uh, what happened to the 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 main character's brother or didn't she have kids somewhere in there and they were sick um, you got to make sure you're you're taking all of those plots and answering those readers questions but your ultimate plot has to be done that is so important the ultimate goal of the story that question or that challenge that you gave to the reader, what if this happened? At the end of the story, must be answered. So number one, set an ultimate goal for the story itself. Um, number two is consequences. Um, what if the goal isn't reached? Realize what will happen or put in the peril of what will happen if this goal isn't reached. Um, in the beginning of of my latest book tanner's devil uh tanner had to pay off her medical expenses no ands ifs or buts about it in order for her to accomplish her dreams in order to get what she wanted in the world in order to be finally legit at what she's doing she needed to pay off her debts and if she didn't it would send her right back to where she didn't want to go so she that's what was the ultimate goal. You wanted to see if Tanner could actually reach your dreams. I want to thank you guys for the hearts. Love them. Love them. If you like what I say, just please give me some more hearts. <laughs> Number three, requirements. What must be accomplished, what must be accomplished in order to achieve that ultimate goal. So um, you want to make sure that you're letting the reader know um, what the main protagonist and that's your main person must do in order to accomplish that goal a lot of writers kind of leave that like as a secret and then they they you got to make sure you put this like at the beginning of the story I'm not saying throwing it all in chapter one but you must let readers know um, what this this is going to require for the character itself and that's when I talk about knowing your character remember knowing your character this morning and knowing what they can and cannot do at that time because as you progress through the story you're gonna definitely um, need to uh, see a change in that character so four warnings counterpart to requirements of what what won't be accomplished I mean you're gonna make it you gotta make it real so you have to make a reality to what could happen and what won't happen absolutely not that means you're actually putting your character behind a wall that yeah I gave you this ultimate goal but now you got to jump this wall in order for it to happen so what is the cost or more of the sacrifice to the character if they change the norm where they are where they are uh, what cost is it that's five if they hey LaShonda if they change where they are what is it going to cost them to get to the ultimate goal what are they gonna lose what are they gonna gain um what could possibly happen you have to think about all of this as you're plotting because you want to do growth through the story the story must move must move that's crazy if it doesn't but the story must move in order for it to be successful you must see some movement in the story and you must see some movement with the character so that five is very important what is is it going to cost in order to get to that ultimate goal uh, number six the dividends the dividends 
and that is the rewards to that the characters re receive along the journey towards the story goal. So it's kind of like inventing your own video game, except it has its own story to it. So when that character reaches um, those certain requirements, they get a reward. You know, if, if, if then if they reach the forewarning, they, they don't get a reward. They get the hand slapped. So it kind of like you're, you're telling the characters, okay, even though you're like this, this is what must happen in order for you to get there, but don't do this. Don't do this. So you have to actually have dividends inside of the story to give the story more of a 3D kind of uh, appearance. It can't just be a, a, a two-dimensional, you give, the, the, the character gives. There's just too much giving. It has to be a give and take going throughout the story, a pull and a push going through it has to be this this sinking of of uh stories where the character is eventually going to take over the story and that's where we talked about well i get to an end of the story and i stop now as we go along i want to know um how far are you guys into your story you know are, are you a 25 percent are you a zero percent writer where you haven't picked up a pen or are you a 25 percent writer where you're you just started off 50% almost done, 75% uh, you're almost at the end, or 100%, and you just kind of want to know, you know, where your story is going to go after this, or if you have created. So let me know, you know, type that in so then I know. And don't forget the hearts, and don't forget to share. If you are just joining us, because I see more people in the room, um, my name is Sylvia Hubbard, and I am a suspense romance author of over... 30, uh, 35 novels, 50%. Very good, true urban queen. That's, you're getting there. You're almost there. How long has it take you to get there? I would love to know that. Um, as we get going, uh, my name is, oh, I did Sylvia Hubbard. You can check me out, sylviahubbard.com. And also my organization is motownwriters.com. Thanks for joining us again, Bob. Okay, so number seven. We're going on prerequisites. The prerequisites are events that happen in order for the requirements to happen. So, whenever they reach a requirement, which was the accomplish in order to achieve the goal, where they get the, yay, you got there, the prerequisites happen. So, world falling apart, they get to the part where they got the first, you know, the, the, the first totem, and then, you know, that saves part of the world. Well, that's a prerequisite. It, it must happen because that's the ultimate goal was to save the world. So in Tanner's Devil, uh, Tanner needed to get the money first, no matter ands, ifs, or ducks. Oh, four months, that's pretty good. That's, yeah, pretty good between writing and life. Yeah, that's very excellent. So, yeah, keep us abreast of that. Um, so in Tanner's Devil, um, she needed the money right then, right right there in three days. So when she met Devlin and he gave her the money after, of course, an exchange of a favor, um, that was the first thing. She got the school paid off, but then um, she continued on with Devlin. You know, even after her first prerequisite of, okay, I got some of the money to pay it off. How can I get more money to finish everything off and get my life together? Well, that was one of the prerequisites happened, is that, hey, she got part of the money paid off for school, so yay, that was her prerequisite. She hit that. Um, events must happen in order for the requirements to happen. Things happen. It's a, um, it's a, it's a catch and release. It has to happen. Things that, the, you know, once one thing is hit, you must show the reader that, yes, this has, this has been accomplished. Okay? But then you have preconditions which is a junior word a junior version of forewarnings that means um, if this is not done this is going to happen and of course just like in life your character can't hit all the requirements no one can actually hit all the requirements and you must throw that in in order to say okay you didn't get all the way there you're still you still didn't finish up so in Tanner's devil she still didn't tell her ex-pimp, <laughs> that, you know, she was doing one more job behind his back. So that was a forewarning that 
people knew she was going to get in trouble and it became a precondition that the pimp said, hey, you took money from me. Now you're going to have to pay the the punishment for that. Hey, I didn't see your name. It just popped up, popped in. So let us know your name. Um, so you have to make sure you have these preconditions and prerequisites because you want a reward and a punishment system. You want to send the reader into something that says, oh my gosh, I don't know if she can make it. Like we were talking about this morning, stop making the story so easy for the protagonist. That is not real. Things happen. Crap hits the fan all the time, sometimes on an everyday basis. So when you're writing your story, you must put these walls in the way for the the main character or the protagonist in order for them to climb over and get better either they can you know either they can stand still get ran over on the road or keep going so you want to make sure you're doing that take a break we're going to make sure that you are giving me the hearts thank you very much for those hearts and make sure you're sharing this with your broadcast okay so we're going to keep going so when you put all of those all of those plotting points together um you actually are putting together a great outline. That's your outline that you need for the fiction. Once you put all of this together, and even though this doesn't tell you the end of the story, it actually is you're putting together a great fiction story. Now, we talked a little bit about uh, Joseph Campbell this morning, and he actually gave a, he gives 12 great steps, more detail. Tanisha, thank you for sharing. Um, he, he gives 12 great steps to great storytelling. It, it, Joseph Campbell actually was a, a, a literature major, major, and he put together these wonderful steps that are used repeatedly throughout Hollywood, throughout really famous authors, to go ahead and give you the steps all the way to the end. And we're going to talk about that probably in part three, because that goes into a whole new things. But I did send you to Amazon this morning to check it out. Thanks for sharing, Miss Jefferson. So, um, you know, Miss, are you Miss Jefferson still? Because you just got married. I just thought about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, um, we, we're going to talk. That's another thing, because that's a whole new new thing to talk about but these eight plot points will actually help you get the story so we're going to start back over just in case you were late and do a round off so one set an ultimate goal for your story what must be reached and this morning we did talk about have at least one main plot and then at least three subplots and make sure those all get answered by the end but it must be an ultimate goal a promise to the reader that you will answer that what if consequences that's number two what if the goal isn't reached requirements number three what must be accomplished in order to achieve the goal four warnings is number four what will happen if they don't reach the goal <laughs> costs and sacrifices what's it going to cost in order to achieve it and what it's going to sacrifice in order to achieve it six is dividends that is the rewards the character re receives along the journey towards the story goal, the ultimate goal. Number seven is prerequisites. That is what the events in, that what must happen, must happen in order for the requirements to happen. And then eight is the preconditions. This is what is going to go down if you don't get that character to where they need to be. Don't forget, we're always moving forward. It's a junior version of four warnings and our small impediments in the plot. These, these are, and I love putting preconditions into a story. And I think more authors should, you should explore that because you actually, that, that's the page turner. That's basically the page turner because the reader knows the impending doom that is going to happen if they don't do the for if they don't get past those four warnings. It's the impending doom that you feel that your heart is racing. Oh my gosh, she has to meet that goal. She has to get there to where she needs to be. Hey, Mr. Lewis, or Miss Lewis, I can't. Tell me your name. <laughs> Author A. Lewis. <laughs> Putting your story together. Now, once we get these, these eight plot points together, as we're putting them all together, um... 
You want to believe that you have to bring everything to the surface in order to tell the story. Um, stop introducing characters in the middle of the book. That's one of my pet peeves. I mean, the character just pop out all, all of a sudden. Um, stop doing that, please. But you do have to bring everything to the surface. This morning we talked about thoughts, um, characters' likes, habits, you know, what they do on a daily basis. You have to bring everything to the surface in order to tell the story. You have to bring it all out in the open eventually. Um, number two, understand good stories are about overcoming obstacles. That is very important. Remember I said we must move that story forward. That is very important. And if you're not doing that, then you have like a stagnant story. Nobody wants to read a stagnant story. You're just, you're telling a story. You're not showing a story. A story must have movement, sound, voices, smells. It, it must be um, moving forward. And when you're doing that character and moving that character with the plot, like I said, they must be going back and forth in order for it to, to be a great story. Know that you survive and we are examples of others. You know, people say when they're writing their stories or they get to that point in the story, we talked about this this morning, you get to the, the a part of the story and you just completely stop. You're like, I don't want to go any farther. Um, you survived to get this far in the story, even if it's just the first chapter. <laughs> Um, we are example to others. You know, you need inspiration to move that character forward or you need to give that character more challenges. Um, usually, I say, most sometimes when people stop, the story isn't developed or that character isn't developed enough in order for a story to take place. You know, if you feel like, oh, I can't do this story anymore, work on the story development. Work on the character development. Because once you start putting adding extra elements in there, Near the beginning of the story. Do not add extra elements in the middle of the story. <laughs> Please set us up. You know, she don't know how to do kung fu by the end of the book when she was a nurse. That's impossible <laughs> to defeat the, the bad guy. She don't know how to shoot a three fifty seven <laughs> perfectly without being punched into the back wall. You know, you, you want to make sure you develop it realistically. Um, I love that saying where it says... Uh, uh, Reality can be anything, but fiction actually has to make sense. Make sure when you're going through this this whole fiction journey, you are making sense and you're justifying your story. Hey, Fiat. Hey. Got to check out Fiat's uh, series called Get Naked. Love it. It was great being in a part of her web series. Don't let anyone, the last thing of putting your story together, don't let anyone not even yourself convinced you you made a mistake. We talked deeply this morning about creative writing. This is creative writing. There are no rules. There are no rules to this writing. There is no writing idea too silly, too short, too long, too bad. Whether it's fiction or nonfiction, that is very important for you to know that and understand that within yourself. We just did a, a breakfast, a, a brunch with women this this uh uh, evening, I mean this Saturday, we did it this Saturday, and one of the questions came up is, I, I don't feel confident about putting my story out. It's your story. You did it. You produced this baby. You can't keep it from, from the world. You, you, you made your mess a message, so you got to get it out there. Don't be afraid. Now, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I would love to answer. Don't be, most importantly, don't be afraid to tell a story, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. But you want to do justice, especially in fiction. And a lot of people say, well, nonfiction is really hard. It's, I don't think it is. I think fiction is even harder you, because you're giving uh, a lot of, of, of work to making someone believe your lie, which is storytelling. <laughs> You're given so you want to make sure when you're you're doing this whole process of this, you want to make sure that you are you're giving them a, a great lie. So that that's pretty much it. Um, stay with me. I want to go a little bit into. I gotta open up. I have a whole bunch of presentations. So sorry if the camera moves because it's like attached to a very rickety table. I am slowly trying to get my periscopes together. 
And I swear, once I do, you guys are going to be like, oh my gosh, she is just awesome. <laughs> but I have a whole bunch of PowerPoints that I have, and it's been, uh, I, I want to make sure that I get the whole PowerPoint. And this one that I pulled up didn't have, like, the whole thing, and I feel like I'm missing out on something. So a little bit I'm going to talk about in our next portion, and it's like 10 more minutes that I have your time, um, is going to talk about weaving a romance into suspense now this is just a touch up a touch on it and that's what i basically do is basically weave romance into suspense um a lot of us feel like if you're writing the ultimate story in all good stories the is is love that's what connects humans together no matter what the story is it could be love with with a woman or love with another human uh, love with uh, uh, himself, love with the world, you know, whatever your protagonist is going through, ultimately a good story has to do with love. So you could sit here and say, well, I'm a guy, I don't want to read a love story. If he's fighting to save the world, it's a love story. If he's fighting to save his dog, it's a love story. <laughs> if he's fighting to save his other military partner, make sure he get out of the covert operation, it's a love story. <laughs> so ultimately, when you're working on any story, what makes a good story is the, the presentation of how you, you brought that love story to life. You understand what I'm saying? But I do write romance and suspense. And um, when you're hearing me saying, okay, romance, I'm talking about the love story intertwined within what's going on. And of course, the suspense element is what I've always loved. I've always loved romances, but I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm from Detroit. I need uh, I need something going on. I need somebody's life in jeopardy. I, I also need the drama as well. <laughs> I don't know if it's from Detroit or just how I was raised or just because I'm a woman. You know, we like all of that. <laughs> Sorry about that. That is my alarm to get ready to go. <laughs> So, in my opinion, so a romance suspense, in my opinion, is a romance suspense is a novel with a story that is driven equally and simultaneously by the threat. I know. <laughs> That's my alarm. I don't know. I, I don't know if you heard it, but it was Christina Aguilera. And for some reason, I can't stand that song. And it makes me get out of bed. <laughs> it makes me get out. It literally, because I can't, I can't hear alarms. I can't hear anything. But you put Christina Aguilera on, for some reason, I will move. <laughs> I will get away from it. So don't tell nobody that. Well, I told everybody. <laughs> but for some reason, that, that, that song just makes me, oh, God, I got to do something. <laughs> so a romance suspense is a novel with a story that is driven equally and simultaneously by the threat of danger and the promise of romance. Um, a lot of us take the, the romance <laughs> and the suspense and they separate it. So there'll be one chapter romance, next chapter suspense, third chapter romance, fourth chapter suspense. You can't do that. You must intertwine them. They must go together like that throughout the whole story. You know, while they're being uh, romantic, you know, somebody's about to shoot them. I think that did happen in, in my book, Sin, was it Sins and Equity? Was it... Yeah, it was sins iniquity, and I know that's a I know that's a repetition on words, but in that story, Sinclair um, and Dwight were you know finally realizing that this is what they wanted. They wanted to be together. It was a scene, and it was so so significant through the whole story because they had fought to get to that point of realizing this is where they wanted to be with each other, and then I shot them. <laughs> I know that's not funny, but it was a really good scene. And, you know, it's kind of like, oh my gosh, no, that just doesn't happen. But it did, and it was actually an awesome way. I know, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I see new people coming in. So, <laughs> so when you're doing the romance and suspense, tips to remember is unlike real life, like I said, the romance and suspense plots must make sense. The plots must make sense. You must tell a believable lie. You gotta read the story. <laughs> you gotta read the 
the story. <laughs> okay, and romance means happily ever after. You can't coin your book a romance and they they get you know they they um you know they don't end up together. That was the whole point of the romance is that they ended up together. It was a happily ever after. You made you made a, a promise that these two people were gonna meet, they're gonna fall in love <laughs> And they're gonna they're gonna run off into the sunset, of course, maybe with bullet wounds and you know some something lost. But hey, they they will run off together. So and even like because people mistake Romeo and Juliet as being a romance, it's not. It's not a. It's a contemporary. It's it's a it's a it's a piece of literature, but it's not a romance because they die in the end. There was no happily ever after. So you really have to understand that that romance, you must, 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 no matter what, have to have a happily ever after. That is critical. Like, underline that several times. Um, we talked a little bit about um, characters and character developments this morning, but we're going to go a little bit deeper inside of the romance suspense or the romance kind of uh, characters where there must be an alpha protagonist. It must be... You know, they must have an alpha protagonist. Somebody must lead the dance. Um, and when I say this, I'm saying that someone, one of the characters, the protagonist, they must be able to, to lead where this love story is going. Now, a lot of times what I like to do is put the control in, in the, the worst person's hands, the ones who has the most faults, the one who really don't want to be in the relationship, I actually put the love story in their hands. That means when you're reading the story, you're like, this person don't even want to be in love. This person don't even want to get with anybody. And it actually heightens the tension of the reader because they're like, well, if this person doesn't even want to be like that, then why are we even in a love story? So it, it kind of creates that tension that you need because as the reader is progressing, they can actually see a change in the character. And remember... Change is important. We must move the story. It cannot stay stagnant. Once that, once those two protagonists who are who are gonna fall in love meet, something must happen with them. You don't just meet and then have babies and fall in love and go into the sunset. That does not happen. If somebody was a, if you meet somebody today, of course you're you're wary of them. Who are you? What do you want from me? Anything. I don't care whether they're rich or poor. Well, if they're rich, whatever. <laughs> whatever you want. <laughs> but in fiction, <laughs> in fiction, they must have that that uh <laughs> forewarning that maybe this isn't good. It's too good to be true. <laughs> you must be. So, okay, so your main character development, start writing this down, must have an alpha protagonist, somebody who leads that story and gathers and just guides it along. Now, I'm not going to say that secondary character can't jump in and say, hey, maybe you need to go this way. Maybe we should go this way. Maybe you should listen to me for once. But it must be an alpha protagonist. Number two, you must have antagonists. Where there is good, there is evil. Where there is nice people, there are horrible people. You must have these two ends of the spectrum constantly fighting, pulling, pushing against each other. And you must have a villain. Now, I know that that sounds crazy because you think your antagonist is your villain. Sometimes your antagonist could be just that other person that they're falling in love with. Sometimes the antagonist could just be a devil's advocate just going in and saying, you know, you can't do this. No, you can't. This is not right. You should stop. Let's go. No, let's not do this. Or you shouldn't be falling in love. It could be the best friend putting that negativity in the ear all the time. So you must have an alpha protagonist. You must have an antagonist. And you must have villains. There is somebody out there with doom and gloom, especially in, in suspense. There is some doom and gloom going on. So number two for main characters and development, you create strong characters, but not perfect. Like we said this morning, stop giving them a perfect life, perfect job, perfect kids, perfect family, and they get the perfect love. That does not happen, and it's not believable. Even in, in, in if you've, well, I'm a, I'm a fan of the old Harlequin novels. Frustrating as it was, 
I'm a fan of the old Harlequin novels where they, you know, they were just going about their daily normal life. They had a problem here or there, and then all of a sudden they met this guy. And then that's when the crap would hit the fan, meeting this guy. They had to make decisions. Do I love him? Do I want to be with him? Oh, my God, he wants sex early. <laughs> right, who has time for protect, perfection? And perfection is boring. I'm, I'm going to tell you that right now. Perfection is absolutely boring. And this, in fiction, it gives you that, that way of creating the uh, a great, you know, uh, two characters that have no way of getting together. In my, um, in my book, Stealing Innocence, which was, a lot of people hate the character Jalen. Because Jalen was the perfect alpha protagonist. I mean... He, to this day, he still pops in other novels and creates tension with other characters, but Jalen is a horrible person. But Kimberly, on the other end of, of the of that spectrum, was the most nice, was the nicest person you could ever meet. And, and people were like, there's no way these two people could ab absolutely fall in love. Jalen, number one, does not deserve somebody nice in his life. He needs to die. And Kimberly, she can't handle Jalen. His he was just too strong. So Kimberly started off actually as kind of like she was strong and oh, I know what I have to do for my family. I know that I love them. I know I'll do anything to protect them. But she, when it came to dealing with people like Jalen, she just couldn't deal with it. She'd pass out, faint, throw up, whatever it was. She just hated it. Um, <laughs> yeah, dies. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people still feel that way about him but it was great because I had these two strong characters in their own in their own right they had strength in their own right but somehow they needed each other and they they formed a chemistry that actually people liked number three which is the most important thing and we talked a little bit touched just a little bit about it this morning is this is the most important thing when you are doing fiction and and this is why I think I think absolutely forty percent people stop because they can't do this. I mean, you literally must do this in order to finish this story. In order to make this story great, you must do this. It's three words. You must listen to characters. You must listen to them. Listen to your characters because. It, no, it's, it's very serious because um, when you're you're not listening to them because they they are making decisions, you're throwing stuff at them. They have to react to it. You have to show that reaction, otherwise you're missing out on great story showing. You're not showing a story. You're telling me a story, and that is bad. You don't tell a story. You must show. If I throw this crap at you, if I'm throwing plots at you, if I'm throwing forewarnings, if I'm throwing um, everything at you, how are you reacting to it? So you must do this in order to, right, show, don't tell. You must do this in order to get that story going, moving forward, getting towards the end. And I think that's 40% of all the time when, when writers come to me and they say, well, Sylvia, I'm at this point in the story and I just, I don't know what to do with it. Well, of course you don't know what to do with it. Now it's time to let the characters do something with it. You you didn't put everything in the pot. Now it's trying to see, you know, how it's going to taste afterwards. Got to let the ingredients do what they do when you're cooking up a stew. So a lot of times, like, we get into a point of where I can't hear my characters. Well, it's time to get back in touch with them because they made a decision. You just can't hear them. So we're going to wrap this up. If you have any questions, please let me know. You have exactly two minutes. I try not to make the scopes too long. Um, and like that's why we did a part two because we really needed to. And I wanted to actually start at a point um, because a lot of people say, well, Sylvia, you need to talk about blogging. You need to talk about marketing. You need to talk about this. Well, let's talk about writing first. Let's talk about producing a great product to get out to the customers before we do all of that. And then we progress on. So whether you are a beginner writer, whether you are in the middle of writing, like um, Sharon said, true, um, where she said, you know, she's 50% done with hers. 
um, or whether you've written a book, it's great to know this information. Always keep learning. Even after 37 books, I love just reading about the, the art of storytelling. And I love going and actually teaching this program to other people. And if you're out there and you'd love me to come speak at your program, please contact me. And I want to reintroduce myself before I let you go. If there are no questions, my name is 37 Books. Yes, 37 Books. And by the end of this year, it actually be, uh, I can't count, 37, 38, 39, 40. I should be 41 books. I'll be completed with four more books because we got live stories going on at the site. But let me reintroduce myself. My name is Sylvia Hubbard. I am suspense romance author of over 37 books, award-winning um, and I am founder of Rome, uh, uh, Motown Writers Network. I'm blog host is over five blogs, and um, I help uh, authors bring their works to life. Um, I would consider myself a literary doula. <laughs> right, MWMMotownWriters.com. Um, you can check me out at SylviaHubbard.com. We're about to start our new live story actually in April where I do a blog book um, live story and I actually tell a story every day you can subscribe at the website and of course you can find the uh, outline to this uh, this in a couple of weeks actually I post it and I said I'm gonna get better at posting them when I do the periscopes uh, how to ebook.org you can join there and make sure you see uh, get updates for it Please, 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 if you have other writers, share this broadcast with them. Let them know what you learned and let them know how they need to really, really come in and hear this and just send me questions. You can always go to my website, check us out at Motown Writer, SylviaHubbard.com, and HowToEatBook.org. We're going to get off and actually, I have to go to work because I actually have a 40 hour a week job. I call them a benefit job. <laughs> and I know it's late. You're like, it's time to go to bed. Nope, I don't sleep at night, so I got a job where I could work all night and get paid to stay up and write. <laughs> it's just crazy, but that's what I did. I know, that's just crazy because I'm up, like seriously, from midnight all the way to 3 in the morning. That's my, that's my writing time, so why wouldn't I get a job late at night? So, yes, it's actually true. Sylvia does not sleep when you're sleeping. <laughs> So I want to thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to share. Thanks for the hearts. Um, send out the replays. If you're here for the replay and you have any questions, you can always go to my website at sylviahubbard.com and click the contact tab and ask whatever questions you want. Make sure you refer to what podcast you're talking about. <laughs> right, 37 books, right. And 41 by the end of this year. So that's kind of cool for me. Yay, Sylvia. Um, you have, um, And then I'll let you know when this will be up. For a replay on YouTube. So, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. So, uh, this will be up at uh, YouTube in a couple of weeks as well. So, I want to thank you guys for joining us. I do have to leave because I'm going to be late. And, yeah, I can't be late today. I can be late other days, but I can't be late today. <laughs> thank you and go to bed. But make sure you are doing your writing every day every day people right every day we're going to be the olympian to get that gold medal we're practicing every day so don't forget so good night thanks guys for joining and see you next thursday we're going to talk a little bit about more writing but then we're also going to be talking about blogging so make sure you join us because that's going to be awesome good night <laughs>